That was it, the 22nd and final practice Friday of the 2023 season. Dear Motorsport Magazine friends and Formula One fans, we would have loved to present you with the long run analysis on our website today, but it has been cancelled. You can thank Carlos Sainz and Nico Hilkenberg for that. They involuntarily caused two relatively long red flags in the second practice session. As you all know, the second free practice is the session for the long runs, and they were cancelled. Carlos Sainz lost control of his Ferrari after just a few minutes. The accident reminded me a lot of Lando Norris' accident a week ago in Las Vegas. Why? Carlos Sainz drove into the dirty air of an Alpha Tauri and then hit a bump and completely lost control without a chance, crashing into the Tech Pro barrier at relatively high speed. Fortunately, nothing happened to him. The Tech Pro barrier was relatively badly damaged and had to be repaired, hence the particularly long interruption to practice at that point. Lando Norris also lost control due to the car bottoming in Las Vegas, and of course he was also in dirty air at the start. Of course, the generation of cars since last year only works with extremely low ground clearance, and it's possible that the teams are learning more and more about their cars, how they can drive as low as possible, and without wearing out the floor panel too much. It's possible that there are now more and more incidents where the cars touch down and the drivers lose control. So I'm curious, I'm sure it will become a big issue if it happens again somewhere. Nevertheless, in this case he was lucky, nothing happened to him. The car is also doing relatively well after its chassis was damaged following the manhole cover affair in Las Vegas. A replacement chassis is being used here. The chassis is okay though and there were no plans to use the gearbox for the rest of the weekend anyway, so no punishment for him this time, even if it was his own fault this time. Nico Hülkenberg, a little later, the practice session had just been reopened. He crashed in turn one and we also saw some problems among the drivers. He lost the car at the exit, was too aggressive on the gas pedal, uh, spun and hit the rear of the car, a bit of damage to the car of course, and came to a halt on the track. Second red flag, really bitter for him personally because he had to sit out the first free practice session. In FP1, Oli Behrman was in his cockpit. Today was a big rookie Friday. A total of 10 young drivers were in action. So Nico Hülkenberg started this weekend in Abu Dhabi without particularly good preparation in today's practice sessions. Red Bull was particularly affected by the long interruptions to practice. Why is that? Because both regular drivers, Sergio Perez and Max Verstappen, suspended the first free practice session for the junior drivers. Red Bull waited so long, you have to use two in the season. Two junior drivers, or at least two junior drivers, have to be used. It can also be the same one. At Red Bull, they just waited a long time. Red Bull waited a long time because they said that the session wasn't representative in daylight anyway but they were expecting to be able to do a lot of work in the second free practice session, a lot of setup work, but it didn't work out that way for the reasons I mentioned. These many interruptions and Max Verstappen didn't really get it right either. Only third place, almost a medium disaster for the dominator of the season, two tenths of a second behind, but he complained about the handling of his RB19. He said he jumped like a kangaroo and especially in the first corner, like Nico Hilkenberg, he had bigger problems. He lost almost the entire time there. Nevertheless, you know, of course, Red Bull often doesn't start really well into the Friday and still wins superiorly in the end, but you could tell that Max Verstappen's ambition is still there and that things aren't going quite so smoothly because there was an incident twice in the pit lane at the restart. He wanted to get out as quickly as possible and then said, wait a minute, the Williams who want to get in line have to wait until I've passed them. So he started a discussion, actually relatively unnecessary in a free practice session, but of course he wanted the track position and a little later when the restart took place for the second time he also wanted to get past the Mercedes in the pit lane exit but they didn't really give him any space a really exciting or really thrilling situation almost like a tailgater on the highway who somehow tries to squeeze past and the road works but it was his right the Mercedes drove slowly but didn't make room why was he driving so aggressively Red Bull had a run plan and they wanted to do at least two fast laps two timed laps both on the medium and on the soft tire Verstappen was relatively annoyed, said it was relatively stupid when you have so little practice time and then you waste it in the pit lane. So Max Verstappen has nothing to give away at the last race weekend of the season. I hope you have something to give away. Christmas is almost here and what could be better than a print subscription to your favorite motorsport magazine? I've said it a few times. Very important with this gift. It's not an ongoing subscription. You give your loved ones a year's print subscription. 
and that's the end of the matter for you. Unlike with a normal subscription, if you get it yourself, it continues until you cancel it, which is not the case with the gift. Let's get back to the topics of the day. Apart from the track, there was, of course, also a lot discussed. There was the team principals press conference. Mike Crack was one of the people sitting there. He praised Fernando Alonso in his media session yesterday quite a lot. He continued with that today. And then, of course, the question arose as to what the future actually looks like. Alonso has already signed for 2024. It was a two-year contract he had signed with the team initially. But the driver carousel will be really exciting next year. You can actually already look ahead to 2024. And then Mike Crack made relatively short work of it and said, yes, of course we want to keep Fernando Alonso. He didn't even want to elaborate on the whole thing. Fernando Alonso is still in the form of his life. Alonso himself said yesterday that his current season is as good as the 2012 season in which he narrowly missed out on the world championship title and that at the tender age of 42. And then he's still looking two years into the future. So he really is a racing animal, if you like cockpit there was something yesterday um, a dispute between Christian Horner and Lewis Hamilton uh, Christian Horner he's also in the press conference today and of course he had to be asked about it again and he then said well more or less between the lines he said relatively clearly that the person he spoke to was Anthony Hamilton Lewis Hamilton's father who also used to manage him and he said that if he spoke to the father someone with the same surname then he actually assumed that this would also affect Lewis Hamilton um, I'm curious to see how this will continue. I'm sure that Lewis Hamilton will also be asked about it. Hamilton himself said yesterday that he asked in his team, in his camp, apparently the dad, Anthony Hamilton, is no longer part of it. And then there were also political issues today. The F1 commission met, but the whole thing was under the motto, everything will stay as it is. Sprint. Not everything should actually remain as it is, but for the time being there is no decision, neither where the sprints will take place in 2024, there will still be six sprints, nor as far as the format is concerned, it was actually almost certain that you would have free practice on Friday and then qualifying for the sprint, then the sprint on Saturday morning and qualifying for the Grand Prix on Saturday afternoon. But no decision was made. There is further discussion. Horner also brought reverse grid into play again today in the press conference. I hope that won't happen. Everything remains as it is, at least with the tires. 2025 was once again up for decision if the teams should be allowed to use tire blankets or not. They said, yes, we'll stick with the heating blankets for the 2025 season and we'll stick with the allocation of 13 sets of slicks per race weekend in the future. They tried twice this year to get by with two sets less. They don't want to introduce that in the future. The whole thing is about sustainability, but they say the show shouldn't suffer as a result, and that is why it will stay that way for the foreseeable future. At the same time, it has been determined that the mud guards for the rain will continue to be tested, this time with significantly more excessive wheel fairings. The whole thing is to be tested for the first time in spring of 2024, and they also want to draw conclusions from Qatar this season when many drivers complained about extreme heat. In the short term, a second cooling opening will be permitted in the coming season, but the issue will continue to be looked at more closely. On the same topic, safety, where they want to ensure that no metallic parts fall off the floor and could potentially injure someone behind it, which is why the use of metallic parts on the floor will be more limited in terms of both weight and surface area. There are a few adjustments to the financial regulations in terms of sustainability and so on, which I think is relatively unexciting for the normal Formula One fan. And then, in 2026, we know that the big rules revolution is coming, and more and more details about these regulations have now emerged, even if they are not yet fixed, but there is already something that the teams can work with, it has to be said, because it has been agreed that the development for 2026 will only be released in 2025. This means that the teams are not yet allowed to develop the car for 2026 and 2024. We already know this from the coronavirus era, for example, when it was also forbidden for a relatively long time to continue development at the end of the year for the 2022 car. So much for the political side today. Tomorrow is the last qualifying day of the year and the qualifying dress rehearsal. And it will be really exciting this time because we saw so little running today that even here in completely different conditions, I think everyone wants to go out on the track. Everyone wants to collect data again and maybe one or the other won't get it quite right because the track is developing strongly due to the severe temperature differences. So it's all set for an exciting qualifying day.